Are you all familiar with a social media site called Twitter? We've heard of it. Twitter is used to share little tidbits of information, and they have to be little tidbits because you get 140 characters for your message. And actually, you probably get less than that because you're going to want to sign your message. So you learn to be direct and to the point. And I've been using Twitter for a couple of years and have um, developed this wonderful group of what are called followers. So your followers can retweet your message to their followers. And so your message goes on and on. So on Monday, this was my short tweet. When we forgive others, we free ourselves. Short, direct, to the point. And within an hour or so, this was being retweeted and gone, going out to other followers. And that's very nice when that happens. But what really caught my eye on Monday was a response that someone posted. And it said, sometimes when we forgive others, we free those others to continue to engage in their harmful and damaging behavior. Suggesting that, uh, in this person's opinion, it's not necessarily a great idea to always be so ready to forgive. Well, the person has a point, but I think what came to mind for me is how easily we can rationalize whatever thinking may be most comfortable for us in a given moment. The truth is that all spiritual paths, all religions, all philosophies encourage forgiveness. And they encourage forgiveness for the sake of the person who is forgiving. And yes, it's wonderful for the person who is being forgiven. But we really don't have any control over that. We can forgive someone and they can still resent us. They can still be angry they can still continue with whatever actions and whatever words were upsetting to us in the first place. So the act of forgiving is really for the forgiver. It frees the forgiver from that stress, from the tension, from thoughts of vengeance or revenge, from that constricted feeling within and it opens up a certain spaciousness that I have room to forgive. Now sometimes people think about uh, a certain action or something that was said that they say is absolutely unforgivable. And so what the teachings say from a Buddhist perspective is look deeply and see if there isn't a way to begin the process of forgiveness. And watch out for that tendency to rationalize why I am right. Same idea as when we're on the street and there's a homeless person with their hand out. And we can easily rationalize if I give that person something, they're going to head right to the liquor store and I'm just going to be enabling drinking or the use of drugs. Maybe. But then again, maybe not. So rather than spending our time judging, we can at least try as an experiment, what if I just was generous? Maybe one of those might be a mistake, but wouldn't I rather make that mistake than close my heart to those who are truly needy? 
And so that was just the thought that I wanted to share this evening, was go with what is right. And in this case, we're using the word right as we've been using during this teaching that's been going on about the Noble Eightfold Path. What is right is that which can lead toward ending suffering. And what is not right, in terms of our words and actions, is that which leads toward creating suffering. So when we look at what our actions should be, consider what can lead toward an end of suffering and what is likely to lead to continuing suffering. And then we will find that our decisions are usually pretty clear. So just like on Twitter, short and to the point, and now we can take just a moment or two to sit with that and watch in the mind to see what comes up. <laughs> 